this should try and help you uh, do your samples. So that was the base colour, um, and that's made up with about 50% of that, which is fine filler. It's the, it's the one that you put on, you can't put on deeper than about two millimetres, because it's much harder. We, want, we don't want to go with another type of filler, which is soft at all. And then it's, this is old, but it's it's golden gesso. You can get that, because that is actually American, I think. So it's half of that, half of that with pigments, right? Powder paints. And if you're making up for that, back, which has got to be thick, you want to put, you want to make a lot of that up. Uh, probably a pint and a half. It's really going to use a lot, and you don't want to run out because you have to make the colour up again, and you want to get it exactly the same. So um, there's a lot of that. So if you were making up a pint and a half, you probably want about six, something like six tablespoons. A lot, you know, because we it wants to be. Um, it helps to take the flexibility out of it. Um, part of the reason, then you've got white and then you've got a lot less. If you're going to make it grey, I'd put raw umber in it, um, maybe a bit of yellow ochre um, and a tiny bit of black. Don't want too much black because it goes a bit blue and I don't really like uh, grey that goes blue personally. Um, so that's that and then we went over that one. That one is um, just acrylic gesso and again the pigments but you don't need to make nearly as much of that up because you're putting that on thinner. Right. Now, the uh, when that goes off, so you leave that for a day at least, and that for a day at least, we do, we um, apply the 50%, so I mix 50%, I'm doing a tiny amount. You actually don't need a lot of this either because uh, it goes a long way. So you probably need a cup full to do two consoles, I'd have thought. Um, so it's, I'm... 50% of each. This is sanding sealer, shellac sanding sealer, not cellulose. Because um, it won't mix with mess anyway. And then you, I'm, I'm mixing raw umber in with it, raw umber pigment. But it, it could be another colour, it could be raw umber and raw sienna or a bit of black or just raw sienna. But I think this um, works quite well. So a little bit, now the, the amount of raw armour you put in there is, um, I think it's quite critical because you don't want it to be, you want it translucent, and be, you don't want it to, to be too solid, too opaque. Um, let's see, not bad, maybe a little tiny bit more. It just adds more depth to it. You could, if you put this on clear, you wouldn't get this other lovely colour on top. You know, it's just another sort of gives it another feather in its cap, as it were. So you put that on there like that. That might be a bit, a bit too concentrated now, but that, that's fine. Um, let that go for a couple of moments. Then you get a scalpel. Now, if the scalpel isn't new, I'll find it even easier because because it's obviously that wouldn't be the case if you were actual dry stripping and you'd want it sharp. But because it's uh, we don't want it digging in too much, it's easier if it's a little bit blunt. Not really blunt, but a little bit blunt. So that would have done that, and then you you dig in. You say you dig. It's very easy. leaving a bit of the raw umber on the top because if you take it all off then you might as well put clear on. It's best to leave it for a few moments before because it's it, it's almost too soft. This goes off hard again, just as hard as it was before. And I'm going in all different directions We want to come through to the grey underneath, obviously. And then it, it really is a question of what you prefer. How much of the, the bottom colour to come through. 
it's starting to get hot. That's why you can only do a little bit at a time because it starts to. Now I mentioned also about mixing this first colour with the, and get make sure all the white is ground down. You can see where I didn't grind it down properly. Um, but I quite like it. But I, I, I don't. I, but I don't want to encourage you to to not grind it down. But if you didn't, and there was a few little bits left, it, it looks like another colour coming through. But I don't want to complicate it too much. You got to experiment anyway. When you get going on it, it, get, it can be quite quick. I'm doing it a bit slowly because I'm showing you. I'm going to leave that little bit there because it gives you the colour. Then use the tip of the scalpel because it makes it look like it's been dry stripped because when you dry strip you go you don't go in one direction necessarily especially if you're doing carving you're finding yourself having to go all over the place to get in there and you'll find that if you're um, doing areas which aren't easy to get to like in the vein of a leaf or something it's sometimes you find that you, you you go down to the wood when you're actual dry stripping so you might want to do that so that occasionally say that you know you can you go deeper so go down to the to the wood there and that gives it even more authenticity you know, and depth mm -hmm. and then I occasionally just do that with the tip that's what happens when you dry strip and you get it's sort of almost jammed the scalp and that's it really not all else I can show you um, I quite like leaving it like that when it's finished when it's all finished um, sometimes you could put you could put some gilding in the really like like low areas in the in the veins of the leaves and places like that where they couldn't get it out because often these pieces were gilded nearly always but often they were grey when they started life and that's it really it's um it doesn't it's quite dry stripping is really really slow but this isn't anywhere near as slow so um yeah good luck if you've got any questions xavier then you can uh, let me know. Goodbye.